Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jesse Colombo, and in this presentation, I am going to be discussing the U.S. household wealth bubble that is currently inflating and why it is heading for a powerful bust. First, a bit about me. I am an economic analyst and registered investment advisor at Houston-based Clarity Financial, and I write for its web publication, realinvestmentadvice.com. I warned about the 2008 global financial crisis as a university student, which then helped me to build a presence of over 150,000 followers on social media. I also write a column for Forbes.com about dangerous economic bubbles that are developing today and how they will cause another financial crisis. In most people's minds, any increase in wealth is a good thing. Surely only a misanthrope would argue otherwise, right? Well, in this presentation, I'm going to be making the unpopular argument that America's post-Great Recession household wealth boom is actually a very dangerous phenomenon. Since the financial crisis in early 2009, household wealth has surged by nearly $46 trillion, or 83%, to a record $100.8 trillion. As this chart shows, the powerful increase in household wealth, which is the blue line, has far exceeded the growth of the underlying economy as measured by the GDP, which is the orange line. Household wealth should closely track the economy as it did during the 20th century until the extreme boom-bust era that started in the mid to late 1990s. When household wealth tracks the growth of the economy, it's a sign that the wealth increase is likely organic, healthy, and sustainable. When household wealth far outpaces the growth of the underlying economy, however, that is a telltale sign that the boom is artificial and unsustainable. The last two times household wealth growth exceeded GDP growth by a large degree was during the late 1990s dot-com bubble and the mid-2000s housing bubble, both of which ended in tears. The gap between household wealth and the economy is far larger today than it was in the last two bubbles, which means that the coming reversion or crash is going to be even more painful, unfortunately. Another way of visualizing the household wealth bubble is to plot it as a percent of GDP, which paints the same picture as the first chart. U.S. household wealth is currently 505% of the GDP, which is even more extreme than the housing bubble's peak at 473% and the dot-com bubble's peak at 429%. Household wealth has averaged 379% of the GDP since 1951, so the current 505% figure is completely out of line, which means that a violent reversion to the mean, also known as another crash, is inevitable. To make matters even worse, the 379% average figure is skewed upward by the anomalous boom-bust period that began in the mid to late 1990s. When household wealth comes crashing down again, there is a very good chance that it will overshoot below its historic average due to how stretched it has become during the current bubble. The bubble that is currently inflating in the U.S. stock market is one of the primary drivers of the overall household wealth bubble. Common stocks, including those held indirectly via mutual funds, are one of the largest components of U.S. household wealth, along with bonds and housing. When stocks are extremely inflated like they were during the late 1990s dot-com bubble, they contribute to the inflation of household wealth. Conversely, when stocks experience a bear market like they did when the dot-com bubble popped, household wealth falls as well. As you can see from the chart, the U.S. stock market, as measured by the S&P 500, is up over 300% from its Great Recession low in March 2009, and it's also 80% higher than its 2007 peak. In this presentation, I will show a variety of charts and other data that prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the U.S. stock market is highly inflated and heading for serious pain. What is driving the current U.S. household wealth bubble, and why is it happening? The answer lies squarely with the U.S. Federal Reserve and its actions during and after the global financial crisis. During the crisis, household wealth plunged as stocks, housing prices, and bonds, aside from treasuries, cratered. These aforementioned assets make up the bulk of household wealth, so bull markets in stocks, housing, and bonds lead to bull markets in household wealth and vice versa. When household wealth plunges as it did in 2008 and 2009, consumers pare back their spending dramatically, which leads to even more economic pain. In an attempt to pull the economy and financial markets out of their deep freeze, the Federal Reserve cut interest rates to record low levels and launched emergency monetary stimulus policies known as quantitative easing or QE. QE basically entails creating new money out of thin air, this is done digitally, and using the proceeds to buy mortgage-backed securities and treasury bonds with the idea that the massive influx of liquidity into the financial system would indirectly find its way into riskier assets such as stocks. Even though the Fed has only two official mandates, which is maximizing employment and maintaining price stability, 
boosting asset prices essentially became their unspoken third mandate after the 2008 financial crisis. While the idea of having a central bank like the Federal Reserve boost asset prices to create an economic recovery may seem clever and admirable, it is terribly misguided because asset booms driven by central bank intervention are overwhelmingly likely to be unsustainable bubbles rather than genuine booms. Central bank-driven booms are very similar to sugar highs or highs from hard drugs. A crash is inevitable once the substance wears off. When central banks interfere in the markets, they create mass distortions and false signals that trick investors into believing that the boom is legitimate, even though it's not. The chart you were looking at is the Fed funds rate, which is the interest rate that the Fed raises and lowers in order to steer the economy. When the Fed holds rates at very low levels, which keeps borrowing costs in the economy low, dangerous bubbles form in asset prices and the overall economy. When the Fed ultimately raises rates, the bubble pops, which results in stock bear markets and recessions. The dot-com and housing bubbles formed during periods of low interest rates and popped when interest rates were raised. What is terrifying is the fact that interest rates have remained at record low levels for a record length of time since the financial crisis, which means that the current market distortion and coming crisis will be even more extreme than the last two. Remember how extreme the current household wealth bubble looked in the two charts shown earlier in this presentation? Well, that is certainly no coincidence. It is a direct result of the extremely loose monetary conditions over the last decade. This chart shows the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, which shows the assets purchased by the central bank during its QE programs. Each QE program led to an increase in the Fed's balance sheet and corresponding surge in asset prices, which in this chart is the S&P 500 index. The three QE programs caused the Fed's balance sheet to expand by over $3.5 trillion to a peak of approximately $4.5 trillion. The U.S. stock market is now very overpriced relative to its underlying fundamentals such as earnings, revenues, assets, book value, etc. According to the cyclically adjusted price-to-earnings ratio, which is a smooth price-to-earnings ratio, the U.S. stock market is more overvalued than it was in 1929, right before the stock market crash and Great Depression. Tobin's Q ratio, the total U.S. stock market value divided by the total replacement cost of assets, is another valuation indicator that confirms that the stock market is overvalued like it was at prior generational peaks. Another valuation indicator, the U.S. stock market capitalization to GDP ratio, which is the total value of the U.S. stock market divided by the GDP, shows that the stock market is currently more overvalued than it was during the dot-com bubble. This indicator is known as Warren Buffett's favorite indicator, and he claimed that it is probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. When the stock market becomes overvalued like it is now, reversion to the mean in the form of a strong bear market is inevitable. In addition to the stock market, housing is another major component of U.S. household wealth. It is actually the largest holding for middle-class households. U.S. housing prices are now higher than they were in 2007 at the peak of the housing bubble and are up 50% from their low in 2012. Like they did in the early to mid-2000s, U.S. housing prices, which is the blue line in this chart, are rising much faster than both consumer price inflation, which is the yellow line, and rent inflation, which is the green line. U.S. housing prices tracked inflation, rents, and wages very closely during most of the 20th century, but departed from that historic pattern when the rolling bubble and bust era started in the late 1990s. This chart shows how U.S. housing prices in blue are up over 50% since 2012, while rents are up less than 25% and overall inflation has risen 10%. We are currently experiencing another unsustainable artificial housing boom due to ultra-low mortgage rates since the Great Recession. The Fed helped to push mortgage rates to record low levels by cutting interest rates and buying treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities via its QE programs. Since 2012, 30-year mortgage rates have averaged approximately 4% versus the 6% average during the mid-2000s housing bubble. Though housing prices are rising across the U.S. overall, the housing boom is particularly pronounced in cities like Atlanta, Boston, Dallas, Denver, Portland, San Francisco, and Seattle. In many of these cities, housing prices exceed their 2006 housing bubble peaks quite a bit. Unfortunately, it's an artificial situation due to the stimulative actions of the Federal Reserve. Over the past few years, there have been countless news stories about how unaffordable, overvalued, and inflated many segments of the U.S. housing market have become once again. Because the recent U.S. housing boom is an artificial situation created by the Fed, rising interest rates and the tightening monetary environment will lead to another correction in the housing market. 
In addition to stocks and housing, bonds are another significant component of U.S. household wealth. Unfortunately, like stocks and housing, bonds are quite inflated due to the actions of the Federal Reserve. After the Great Recession, the Fed cut interest rates and bought approximately $3.5 trillion worth of bonds and mortgage-backed securities via quantitative easing, which helped to push bond prices to all-time highs and send bond yields to record lows. This chart shows how bond yields have been in a steady decline for many years, which corresponds to the bull market and bonds. Though bond prices have surged over the past decade, so has the debt that those bonds represent. From January 2008 to January 2018, nominal U.S. GDP grew 37%, while federal debt grew by $11.6 trillion, or 122%, while corporate debt grew by $2.8 trillion, or 82%. Typically, as debt burdens grow, bond prices should fall and bond yields should rise to compensate for the higher risk that bond investors are taking on. Because of the actions of the Federal Reserve, however, bonds actually rose in value even though debt burdens grew significantly over the past decade. This unusual situation will not continue forever. At some point, investors are going to wake up and realize that debt is growing at a much faster rate than the underlying economy and that the situation will only get worse as higher debt loads reduce the economy's growth potential. At that point, the inflated bond market will come back to earth, dragging household wealth down with it. What most people don't realize is just how much our artificial and unsustainable wealth boom contributes to our economic recovery. Higher stock, bond, and housing prices help consumers feel wealthier, which makes them more likely to spend money, which then helps to boost the economy, a process that economists call a wealth effect. As Target CEO Brian Cornell said, we are currently benefiting from a very strong consumer environment, perhaps the strongest I've seen in my career. There is no doubt that the U.S. household wealth bubble is one of the main reasons for this strong consumer environment. It is incredibly alarming that our economic recovery relies so much on asset bubbles that are destined to burst. In the past decade, there has been a growing chorus of concerns about rising wealth and income inequality. Here are some statistics that show how extreme wealth inequality has become. The top 1% of U.S. income earners possess 35.5% of the country's private wealth. The top 10% possess 75% of wealth. The top 20% possess 87% of wealth, while the bottom 50% possess just 1.1% of total wealth. The mainstream explanation for rising inequality is that it is due to a defect of capitalism itself, and that the only solution is increased regulation of the economy, raising taxes for the rich, universal basic income, etc. This mainstream explanation is patently false and disingenuous because it completely ignores the role that the Federal Reserve plays in creating inflation and asset bubbles that benefit the rich over the poor. Here's how the Fed exacerbates economic inequality. The wealthy own a disproportionate amount of assets such as stocks, bonds, and housing. The middle class are often house rich and asset poor, while the poor typically rent their housing and have virtually no wealth. When the Fed inflates asset prices and household wealth, the wealthy see most of the gains, even though they are just temporary, while the middle class and poor see almost none of it. As I have been saying throughout this presentation, the current household wealth boom is really just an unsustainable ephemeral bubble instead of a permanent wealth increase. When this bubble inevitably pops, we are actually going to see a reduction of wealth inequality as the assets owned by the rich fall to more reasonable levels much lower than they are now. This scenario is completely ignored by left-leaning economists and pundits. I believe that society should be more concerned about today's bubbles and how they are going to damage the real economy when they implode rather than wealth inequality, which is just a temporary phenomenon due to these asset bubbles. We need to strike at the root, basically. So what is going to burst America's household wealth bubble? To put it simply, I believe that our wealth bubble will burst due to rising interest rates and tightening monetary policy. Fed-driven economic booms, bull markets, and bubbles end after the central bank raises interest rates to a high enough level. This chart shows how the last two recessions and bubble bursts occurred after Fed rate hike cycles. It's virtually a guarantee that the current rate hike cycle will also lead to a strong recession and bear market. Because of the growing debt burden in our economy, the interest rate threshold that is necessary to end economic cycles keeps getting lower and lower. This chart shows how recessions or financial crises have occurred after historic interest rate hike cycles. To summarize, the U.S. household wealth boom since the Great Recession is a sham, a farce, and a gigantic lie that is tricking everyone into believing that happy days are here again, even though the engines that are driving it are bubbles that are going to burst and cause a crisis that will be even worse than the 2008 crash.
We at Clarity Financial LLC, a registered investment advisory firm, specialize in preserving and growing investor wealth in risky times like these. We are based in Houston, Texas, and have over $400 million under management. Please visit myclarityfinancial.com to learn more about us. We do not believe in the overcrowded buy and hold strategy when the market is so overvalued, but we still use a trend-following investing strategy to make sure we capture upside if this bubble continues to inflate. When we determine that the trend and economic cycle has truly changed, we then shift our clients into highly liquid safe havens that typically rise when risk assets like stocks experience bear markets. Please email me at jesse at myclarityfinancial.com so that we can discuss preserving and growing your hard-earned wealth. Also, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I will be producing many more videos like this. Once again, I'm Jesse Colombo. Thank you for watching this presentation.